so when it comes to no makeup and when it comes to these things and how I said they have spiritual attachments I'm just gonna lightly touch talk touch on some some of them touch talk on some of these things and touch on these things and then I'm going to put the links in the description box hopefully I can find the best ones but maybe over time I'll just uh, add better links so God doesn't want makeup that's one thing he doesn't want one doesn't want his daughters his to wear makeup I don't care even if it's just a little bit of makeup or it's 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 not as much it's a little bit it's not as much it's it looks very you know natural it's a little bit he doesn't want it just a little bit of leaven can lift up the bread right but he doesn't want the makeup because Because you're using these products that are out there. These peop these products are even not even God's products. They're not His. He doesn't produce them. He doesn't put them out there. Just like the remember, for example, remember those shoes, the the shoes that one of the the celebrities, the art. He's a Singer Lil Nas, remember those shoes? Okay, then that's an example of how a lot of these brand names and these products, these makeup, all of them, God doesn't support any of them. So why are you putting that on your skin? Why are you putting it on your face? And then. Makeup, it's so funny how women, when they wear makeup, they take it off and they say clear skin. They want clear skin. And it's just like the makeup, when you put makeup on your skin, on your face, it already makes you age quicker. It already makes you older. When when women take off their makeup, they look like someone punched them. They, they look so pale. They look so, they look so like reddish, you know, or it, like it just, they look so... You know, it looks... What I'm trying to say is... The makeup is already damaging your skin. It's already something that you're falsifying your appearance. You have to go out to... You You start wearing makeup, you can't stop putting it on. Because when you take it off, it doesn't look good. But if you was to take it off and give yourself at least like a few weeks... A good few weeks to heal... Your skin would look rejuvenated again do some healthy natural face mask do uh, get like the i don't think some of the regular face masks like the regular brand face masks from walgreens or a walmart like you know you don't have to go to those expensive products just the regular face mask you know with the bentonite clay mask i think that's enough to get someone's skin clear to do that like once a month or something or once or twice a month but god does not want the makeup you don't need the makeup don't do it it is spiritual that's the that's the thing you think you can just put a little bit that out whatever but then at the end of the day these things are spiritually satan's open doors to your life these these spirits these spirits are going to say oh no we can enter their life because they're using our product it's spiritual at the end of the day that's why god doesn't want you to have any part in it at all and then you don't have to worry as a servant of god the world okay the world doesn't serve god the the celebrities that we look up to they don't serve god so the majority of them so why are you looking up to them they don't have to obey god they don't have to obey the rules they're not looking at their eternity they're not trying to get their eternity into god's kingdom so 
so you can have nice skin and you don't have to. God, right now I'm doing this. Please cover and protect me, oh God. Surround me with your angels. Please get me to speak this out well. I rebuke all pride and arrogance and self-righteousness, all arrogance. I rebuke um I rebuke I rebuke all sarcastic spirits, I rebuke all demonic things, I renounce and rebuke all pride that's even right now in Jesus Christ's name, amen. You know I'm still trying to recover out of my situations. So please make way for me, oh God. And please make way for others, oh God, in the situations in Jesus' name. Jesus, please help me guard and keep my heart, thoughts, and all of me. For out of them are the issues of life. And I cast down every high thoughts and imaginations. And everything that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And I bring each one captive to the authority of God in Jesus' name. I'm really sorry for the discouragement that's going on in the world. It's really terrible. I don't want to be part of it, even though, man, um, things have been very, very dark, late, dark, dark, dark. But why not bring light into the world with bringing light to what is sin and what is what is pleasing to God? What is bondage? The Bible says Satan comes to deceive the world. When you people that serve him, you know, they come out there looking like, wow, wow, pow, kapow, bam, kazam. You can't miss them. They just out and about and no, not out. They're just, they just do everything. They just looking like stars, celebrities. They just looking like best outfit, your face beats, next hairstyle. It's just like. But the, God doesn't want that. God wants the woman to be modest. In Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Thank you, Jesus. Not with braided hair or gold not with plaited hair in other words or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh woman professing godliness with good works I'm going to stop there I'm going to stop there So, shamefacedness, that's where it talks about no makeup, without anything on your face. I know people can say, oh, just a little bit, not too much, da-da-da, but, but again, everything is spiritual. You, it's, you might as well just do every, it all if you're just doing a little bit, if you're being lukewarm about it. There's no gray area. You're either black or white. You're either on the white side of God's kingdom, the, the light kingdom of light, or on the kingdom of darkness. There's no gray area. So, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. God does not want us to wear makeup. And don't wear makeup because it has spiritual attachments. Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel, which a lot of women and men have, that's popular. A lot of people talk about Jezebel, but there's it's deeper. There's other spirits. There's other women out, w w spirits out there, water spirits, marine kingdom. There's all these other ones that will take ownership. They will love you to have their beauty, their products, what they put in the world. It's spiritual. Everything is spiritual before it's physical. Um, the sh um the shoes, you know, we shouldn't be wearing uh the brand names really. Like, 
You don't need to wear the brand name shoes. Especially with the celebrities and how we already know their lifestyle. Anyway, I don't know why I talk about shoes. That That's not something I think I should have. Weave. Everybody knows about weave. Okay, so what I just read, I just said modest, without um, braided hair. You know, the weave plaits. I, you know, one thing on the weave plaits, the twists. Like, God doesn't want any of that. Uh, the sew-ins. Just take care of your natural hair. That's your veil. That's God's veil on you. That's God's... I heard that. Someone saying that. I have a video link for that. But um, the reason why God doesn't want the hair is because the hair has spiritual attachments as well. God doesn't want you to wear fake hair. It's just, why don't you take care and be free? Take care of your real hair and, and wear it out every so often and take care of it. I'm going to do a recording separately on head coverings. So, yeah. Head covering. Why women should head co should cover their hair and head when they are praying and prophesying. Because, you know, your hair is your glory. It's beautiful. Whatever it is. It's, it's, sh it's uh, short and shrunken. It's twist kinky. It's short, curly, long. Um, um, your hair... When you take care of it, it will grow long. It will be long. You know, some people have... Just take care of your hair. Just take care of it and love it. The God doesn't want you to straighten your hair. He doesn't want people to put heat in their hair. He doesn't want you to alter the texture. Why? Because you're basically saying that you don't like the way that he created your hair hair so now you got to change it to make it look like something else like my hair is kinky and it's it it shrinks up a lot like if i pull that if i get a big thick portion with my hand and i pull on it it's gonna touch my shoulder it's gonna touch like about my shoulder my, my chest and and it's long it's long, but then if I let it go, it just slowly shrinks back up because my hair is kinky and it shrinks up when you put water to it. But I take care of it, and every so often, if I want, I could just do like a gel style on it, or I don't do that and I just put a hairpin, let it out, maybe do like a little cute, um, you know, not a mohawk style, but like a you know a little style with the hairpins. Maybe put it up in a puff. That's a popular one. Um, let it out. Put some gel. Let it out. Don't put any gel. Just put a bow on one side. Uh, put two puffs on my head and let the rest of the hair just be out. So you can do lots of styles on the hair. Um... And the the gold, gold, costly array, costly apparel, pearls. You know, I used to like seeing some. A lot of women when they put their clothes, a lot of shirts have these on it now, where the shirt has the lengthless attached to it. The shirt has the beads, the the jewelry around it, around the chest, around the neck. You know, and I would love to get shirts like that because it looked nice. And I would like to get the jewelry because it just looked nice. But when God kind of revealed these things to me, he didn't want any of them. No jewelry, none of the jewelry. He doesn't want that. Maybe a watch, but he doesn't want any of that extraness. Maybe your wedding ring, but he doesn't want the extra, the extra stuff. Um earrings god doesn't want the earrings um a necklace why are you wearing a necklace he doesn't need you to put his cross on your neck he doesn't need it it's vanity he doesn't need it you don't need to look like that 
it makes you look nice and it's a nice style, but why? God doesn't want it. If God doesn't want it, then we don't want it too. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. So this is Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16 all the way to 19, then 20, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. Some of these glasses that women have are, even men are like, fancy glasses you don't need it to be that fancy you know anyway i'm talking about glasses not shades for the sun but anyway the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils and it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell there shall be stink instead of a girdle instead of a girdle a rent and instead of a well-set hair baldness and instead of a stomacher, a girdling, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty, thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Hmm. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I think I talked about the makeup, the hair, the jewelry, the pants, and the long skirts, modesty. So that's something, that's really what I want to talk about. Um, I pray that it is received well. I pray that I can um, put the links in the description box like i said that i would and it will talk more about that about these things and um i wanted to quickly continue reading where i was in first timothy chapter 2 verse 11 to 14 it says let the woman learn in silence with all subjection I supply the blood of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, and I never call you. I cast you once to pit on Jesus' name. Get away, Satan, for his, for his written, I shall worship you, who and only who shall I serve. And Jesus, I shall be delivered from you. I shall overcome you by the blood of Jesus Christ, and by the word of my testimony, I love in my life unto the death thereof. In Jesus' name, I shall inherit everlasting life, and who is kingdom of Jesus' name. I shall hear you who say, Good job. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few, now be faithful with many. Come into the joy of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression.
Um, so, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, means with sobriety, with temperance, level ground. So, back to what I just read. Um, I just wanted to add, like, something about the woman. You know, how God doesn't want women to preach in the church. If you're, if you can preach, but like, um, he doesn't want women to be pastors, like leaders in the church, like leading the entire church without some type of male order over. We well, you know Satan has his churches nowadays, so. Um, and the woman power, leave your husband, run your life. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, something else I was going to say also, um, oh, yeah. Lastly, everyone I notice now just wants to talk about God. And we don't realize that we there's literally wolves in sheep's clothing now. You know, like, they're not actually servants of Yahuwah. Sheep's, wolves in sheep's clothing. What that means is literally, like, they are aware of their a covenant with the evil one. For power and a lot of and if it's not that a lot of uh, ministries are not really are lukewarm have no type of spiritual leverage no power not really just worldly you know just in the world worldly 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 leverage worldly space but the Bible says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample what you cast under their feet and turn again and turn back again to, to mess with you, to make fun of you. So you can't preach to everybody is what that's saying. You can't give that which is holy unto the god unto the dogs neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy don't don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls. Then turn and attack you. Because if you do that, you're basically just like wasting your time. But hopefully, in what you do, it is cast um, somewhere where it can actually bear fruit, you know, in someone's life. And they can use it for themselves to be rich, not to bother you who it's not me. It's for your own. You can. OK, waste. OK, whatever. Do what you want. But um, but for the ones who will receive it to be rich in their own life with God, that's a blessing for them. So that's all I have to say. I think I reviewed it already. So God, I thank you for getting me to do this recording. And I ask that you please make a way for, for this world. I don't know. I think there's a lot of things wrong with it. But 
Make a way, Abba, who are right now in the name of Jesus, that you please make a way that this is received well. I don't want to be casting my stuff to, I don't want me to be wasting, it's on, It's. it goes on the internet, Yahuwah. I hope that it goes to the right ones. I hope they are using the word to help their own life, not my own. I hope that these things could be received well. Because, you know, God says, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who believe who have not seen. You know, everybody wants, oh, I'll, 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 I'll believe when I see this happen. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I'll believe in this and that. And I need to see signs before this and before that. Well, that's sad because you just want to see things. You, you don't have faith. The Bible says we have to have faith without sight. The world wants to see things and then they believe. That's something that doesn't go far without sights. It doesn't have much. But faith, believing for what you don't see, that is what faith is. Okay, but that's all I have to say. I, and yeah, I want to talk about that, what I just went over. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not women to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And then it even goes far to say Adam was first formed and then Eve. Um... And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So Eve fell for the serpent's deception with the apple first. But it's good for the man to teach the word of God in his household, like to have Bible studies. It's good to have that. And even if the woman is involved, like in that Bible study, it's good for households to have that because then everybody can try to be sincere in their walk, in the household. The Bible says, you know, people, the Bible doesn't say this, but the, it really is in the word where you see God is stressing. When he talks about in First and Second Timothy about the church, he's stressing the household to be right first. And then you can put order in the church. Your household, your first church is your home, your household. Even if it's your mother, your granddad that's in that household and your children or just you, your wife and the granddad, you still can have authority of God in that household and order and share the word in that household and teach the word. It's So I pray for more godly men, you know, more men of God in the households, you know, a lot of households don't have this. A lot of cultures, once they go to some, like once they move somewhere else, they forget God. They forget their faith. They don't really, the, people, it's not even just cultures. It's really like people don't really uphold God's ways. They just kind of go with what is trendy and it's surface. But blessed are those who put their trust in God. You know, so I pray for more households like that. Um, and that's it. That's that's all. I pray for this order. In Jesus' name, I pray that you get this received well. I rebuke all doubt and unbelief spirits. I cast you on spirits of hell. I plead blood, Jesus Christ, for all these things. And it's in Jesus' name for all the sin.